Hey guys, today we're gonna go over the bola knot because it is the most effective knot that you can possibly know how to use. It is the king of knots. Um, and I'm gonna show you several fast ways to tie it depending on the situation that you're in. efficient you are at tying the bowline, um, the, the more you're going to use it, the safer you're going to be because it is a very secure knot and, uh, and the more you'll enjoy it. So knowing all the different methods of tying the bowline knot, depending on what application you're using it for, um, is important. A little history on the bowline knot, it is uh, is called a bowline knot or as some would say the bow line knot because it was originally used to tie the big square sails down on the front of uh, sailboats. So uh, on the front of the sailboat is the bow, so that's where it gets its name from. Sailor slang back in the day called it the bowling knot and as a result somehow it just came out as the bowling knot. If you're not familiar with the bowl of knot, the first thing we're going to do is learn how to tie the bowl of knot. <clears throat> I'm going to turn this way for you. Uh, this is your lead line or your, your line that's going out with the tension on it. Um, basically, you're going to create a loop by pulling up from the bottom and crossing over. And the, the idea of the bowl of knot is to create a loop at the bottom of this. So you're going to come up out of the hole, around the tree, and back in again. What I just gave you is the, the bunny analogy. Um, but there you have the bowling. And I tied that without very much uh, leftover line there, which is fine. Um, however, if you really wanted to do a bowling so that it's a, a safer bowling, I would give yourself a little more extra line here come up so you'll notice there around the tree back in the hole now and this is a good method for if you're doing something involving safety take your thumb give it a good wrap and then stick this back through there kind of creates a little slip knot but that's also just giving you a little extra protection on your bolt. This isn't part of the bowl and it's just an extra knot that I'm putting on there. Um, and there's the more line you have, the more you can secure that. But you really don't need to secure this because this isn't going to go anywhere. And the great thing about a bowling is no matter how tight you pull it, it's very easy to come undone. You just pull this, loosens right up comes out. It's one of the things that makes the bola knot so effective is how easy it is to, uh, to undo it. Now I'm going to show you real quick an Eskimo knot. This is your bowlin. So you have your lead line coming out. You've got the line that you're trying to secure coming over top and then you're coming up through the hole. They call an Eskimo knot is the reverse. Come up, wrap around, bring it into the hole. Now, if you pull this tight, it does nothing. Why they call that the Eskimo knot, I don't know. I'm going to do that for you again, but this is just basically what happens if you uh, if you tie the bowline wrong, if it just slips out. It could be, dangerous situation. So you want to make sure that you do your bowling correctly. When you make your loop, uh, put the loop line over the top of the lead line. Come up from the bottom, wrap around the lead line, go back in. There are several methods to tying the bowling knot that you're going to want to know uh, 
real fast and uh, one of them is single-handed bowling knot. Um, this knot is generally used if you're in a situation where you only have one hand and you need to wrap uh, a rope around you. Uh, the bowling knot secures it real nice and tight. Now the, the one-handed bowling knot is probably the most life-saving thing you can know yourself because it's the one thing that's going to save yourself. If somebody threw a rope down to you and you're in the bottom of a cliff and you had broken one arm and you had to tie yourself on, that's how you would do it. So to show you this real quick, um, hold the rope out in one hand, take your other hand and lay it over on top and then kind of twist your arm in under and towards you. Then you just take your rope, wrap it around, and then pull your hand back through. And there you have your bowling knot. We've gone over the bowling knot. We've gone over how to tie uh, an Eskimo knot by mistake. Um, Next thing I'm going to show you here, and uh, pretend this doesn't have a loop on it, this is a, this is a rope from our boat. Uh, the bowling knot is very similar to another knot called the sheet line. And basically what the sheet line is, is if you're trying to connect two ropes, you would make it very similar to the bowling knot. You'd bring your second rope up, um, but I did this wrong. Almost did an Eskimo sheet line. <laughs> so you'd bring your your line up, wrap it around the lead line, bring it back through, and pull these two tight. What you have here is you just joined two ropes together. And again, no matter how much you pull and tighten these, they easily just come right apart. So um, the bowling knot and the sheet line knot are both very similar. Um, ironically, they're both named after sailing terms, so <clears throat> um, I'm guessing they were invented the same way. So if you're in a situation where you need to help somebody else out, we have what we call the one second bowling. And all this is, is you're holding the rope, um, but you pretty much like this, you're turning this in, wrapping that up, and then pulling this through. And what this does is it creates kind of what they call the tugboat bowling. Does the same thing as the bowling knot. Looks a little different, but you can see the similarities. And uh, again, it'll, it'll come right apart. This rope is wet, it's actually raining outside, so um, when I'm pulling it tight and pulling it apart, it's it's still pretty easy with these knots. <clears throat> so the tugboat bowling again, so you hold this, you wrap that up, pull this through, and then boom, you've got your knot, and it's pretty much made in one second. And uh, that's called the tugboat bowling. Yeah, I'm going to show you that again real quick. I'm trying to slow it down a little bit for you. This is known as the, the one second bowling. It's a little different than a regular bowling. So that is why you'll hear me call it more the tugboat bowling. I don't want to get the two confused. They are not the same knot, but they have the similar properties. They do the same thing and uh, they're both easy to tie and you're just basically whipping it together and uh, it's, it's, it's super easy. It's not as difficult as people make it look online if you just slow it down a little bit. Just loop it up and you pull it in just like that. The last bowling I'm going to teach you is called the snap bowling. Um, and this bowling is very easy if you're, if you're trying to tie your rope to something like the, the, the rail here. Um, this is actually the easiest and fastest way to tie your bowling. You can take it through, loop this just like so, pull this up, 
and you've got a bow on. I'm going to show you that a few times here, um, <clears throat> and we'll slow it down for you. So you take your rope, and you've got it looped around. You're going to take your load line here, and you're just going to twist up, and then you're going to pull the load string back through. So you kind of have a weird loop like that. Take the line that you just wrapped around your object, pull it through and back, and then you're going to pull. And if, as I pull, you'll see the bowling kind of snap through in reverse. That's why they call it a snap bowling. So let's do it one more time. So we take this, take the lead line, loop it over, pull it through the bottom, take the line you're wrapping around the object, pull it through and over, and then you just pull the lead line back through again, and your bowling straightens itself out. Take this through. Pull that up. Take that back. So the bowline is just a great knot. It can be used for a lot of different things. Um, one of the things that you could also do with a bowline is you can tie it so you have a smaller loop. Then you just kind of pull your rope right on through there. And uh, if you pull it through, kind of double back on it a little bit. Give it a little bit of a twist. And now you've got yourself a real lasso. The bowline lasso, you're just going to take it. What I like to do, and this is a, another way of tying a bowline that I, I didn't go over, but when you're holding the rope like this, what I like to do is just hold it in two fingers, lay it on top, twist in, and then I just bring it around and through. And that's probably, you'll see me tie the bowline if I'm just hanging out on the farm or I'm working. This is normally how you see me tie it the most, is I just kind of loop it through like that and I've got my bowline on. I didn't think of showing you that way because it's not, <laughs> it's not one of the fancy ways that you learn on YouTube, but that is how I normally tie the bowline, is I just take it like this, loop it over, and twist. So I'm twisting down and my fingertips down and under towards me. Then you pull it up, wrap it around, and voila, you've got your bowline. Um, so to do this uh, bowline lasso, we're just gonna do it my typical way. I'm gonna leave as little of a loop as possible. Just loop it up, bring it around. And that's really all you need is just a little bit of a loop down there at the bottom. Then you're going to take the uh, rope, fish it back through. You want it to kind of look like that. Pull out how much you want for a loop. Double this over. Give it a slight, if you just give it a slight twist like that with your fingers. And then got a lasso. Hope you had fun learning about the bowling.